Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Alrighty, folks, welcome back to another episode. It is Shay here, and I am so glad you are listening. And I just feel like we are in an era where there is so much information and just too little time to consume it all. And I've always kind of felt this way, I guess, for the past few years. And that's kind of what led me to start the Rancher Mind program, because I was just wondering, how do cattle producers manage to sort through what matters most to them with all these publications and newsletters and information on top of hand of on top of having their endless to-do list. And so I want to talk a little bit about how a small group of ranchers have turned to the Rancher Mind program to do just this while they're simultaneously building a community with ranchers around the world. So these people are continuous learners. I want to talk about how they're doing that and how they're building community with other ranchers and really creating conversations that are going to improve their own operations. So Rancher Minds is an online community for ranchers who are dedicated to continuously learning for the betterment of their operations and the future of the beef industry. It's something I started a few years ago. And these monthly Q&A calls with experts and quarterly community calls are pretty casual in appearance. People join from wherever, but they really lead to impactful questions and conversations. Rancher Mind members get to vote on the topics they want to learn about, and they simply hop on the Zoom call. They might be in the office, they might be in the truck, they might be in the tractor, they might be coming back from their kids' ball game. It could be wherever they find themselves that day. They are welcome to hop on the call and join us. So, just in 2024, this group of cattlemen and women have had conversations about risk management, supply chain collaboration reducing input costs and feedlot relationships, as well as estate planning, grazing cover crops, and retaining employees. And you might be listening to that and be a little surprised at the wide variety of topics, but the focus of each conversation ultimately goes back to the same question. How do we as ranchers build profitable operations that are attractive for the next generation? So let's break it down by topic, and I want to cover some of the key highlights from each conversation, starting with risk management, because these conversations, they are really just the highlight of my month, and I don't want to keep all the information to myself. So I just kind of want to give you guys a little taste of all the valuable stuff that we talk about. So risk management in itself is a pretty broad topic. I know oftentimes risk management is really associated with insurance or price protection, but it really goes farther beyond that in those options, even though those are great options. One tip shared was to really know your cost of production to because that'll provide direction on what to protect if you really know where all those key expenses are. This could look like price protection, like we talked about earlier, or it could even look like retaining employees. Each operation is going to be unique, and that and that really needs to be taken into account when you're looking at risk management. Additionally, I think it's always important to remember that zero risk isn't the target. Risk is a part of any business. Agriculture is especially risky. So it really comes down to what risk you are willing to take on and which ones you want to kind of transfer and mitigate. Now, speaking of knowing your break even and risk protection, How can value-added programs or supply chain partnerships be a part of this strategy? The answer, there are many options to choose from. These options include information sharing to some degree. It kind of comes down to which cattle and management practices fit your environment, first of all, and your own goals, and how much information you're collecting and willing to share, as well as who you want to partner with to find the right market for your product. There are so many great opportunities in the beef industry to do this, and you can really take advantage of what's going to be best for you. Maybe for you, the best option is to stick to just taking them to the sale barn. Maybe you do want to build a relationship with a backgrounder or a feedlot or find something that goes all the way through the supply chain. It's completely up to you, and there are so many different options where you likely might not have to change much, if anything, about what you're already doing today. It might just come down to building the right relationships and seeing what works for you. Regardless of the option that you maybe decide to pick or explore, it's really comes down to 
continuous improvement and building relationships over perfection. No one's really demanding perfection. Um, it's that matter of building relationships with the other businesses in the supply chain. And I think that's something that we need to remember is that sometimes we feel shorted as cow-calf producers um, because a lot of that dollar doesn't come back to us. And that's frustrating. But we also need to remember that not everyone is out to get us. There are each segment of the supply chain is a business in itself. And if we can find these opportunities to collaborate, we can create negotiating power as ranchers and build trust with consumers as well, that their food is safe. And all of that is going to tie together into building strong relationships with everyone else down the chain. Now, I briefly touched on it, but one of the conversations we have was exclusively about building relationships with feedlots. And that can also be a step in this whole supply chain conversation, value added programs, et cetera. It can just building relationships with feedlots can look like a lot of different things in the industry. And so when you start building these relationships with feedlots, if that's the route you want to go down, remember that all good relationships require trust, transparency, and accountability. That's something that our guest on the Rancher Man Call really talked about. And with that, search for feedlots that align with your goals and be willing to ask those questions and try new things. I think sometimes when we look at something new, we can overcomplicate it, but so much of what we do as ranchers and really any business is building that trust, transparency, and accountability in relationships. Now, the first three of these topics that we just kind of talked about all kind of tied into a cattle marketing theme, and that was intended. But in April, we shifted gears a little bit more to estate planning. And so first and foremost, I want to say always visit with your attorney to get professional advice about setting up your own estate plan and determining what your best options are. However, there are a few tips that our guests shared that I really think are valuable for everyone to think about. And so first and foremost, that's have a plan. The biggest mistake is always not having a plan. The next biggest mistake is having an outdated plan because you didn't update it. A lot can change in a few years. It doesn't take a lot for maybe you have new assets, maybe you sold some, maybe ownership of some land changed, that maybe there were marriages, divorces, or a host of any other events really that could impact what you have already created in your plan. So one thing you can do to make the process easier for your family after you've passed, after you've created this plan is to create a binder that kind of has some contact information and next steps in it will simplify the process and this transition while your family members are grieving. And with that, with the plan, with the binder, be specific as possible and have, if you can try and have that conversation with your family while you're still alive, you know, it might reduce the risk of any confusion or family feuds, or maybe you miss something and it needs to be talked about. Do you have cool season pastures that you wish you could graze in the summer? Or maybe you graze corn stalks but wish that ground could provide a little extra nutrition. Or perhaps you watch your fallow wheat acres bake in the sun all summer, providing no additional income. For all these situations and more, at Green Cover, they've got the seed and expertise to get you covered. They listen to your needs to design a custom seed mix that works for your unique situation. They grow over 60% of their inventory through contract producers, and they deliver it right to your door, no matter where you are at in the country. With over 120 species in stock, from sorghum sedans, millets and cowpeas to oats, rye, clovers and peas, they have everything you need to keep your ground covered and feed your livestock. Reach out to their expert sales team to get a quote today or visit their website at greencover.com. Kind of shifting into other topics, input costs are always a hot topic for our quarterly community calls and something that always get brought up on or kind of alluded to even if they're not directly brought up on our monthly calls. And so one method of reducing input costs is an extended grazing season because feed can be such an expense for ranchers. Now, one method of extending your grazing season and boosting soil health is the use of cover crops. So some of the tips that were offered were before diving in headfirst to cover crops, find a mentor for guidance and support. Additionally, go all in on a small scale when you start, instead of just halfway doing it on a lot of acres, 
because one, it reduces the risk when you go all in on a small scale, but two, it will show you maximum benefit if you're doing it appropriately. And then you can see how well it will actually work. Or if you're halfway doing something, you might not see the results you could have if you would have been fully committed. Now, one question that I really enjoyed from this conversation was, do you want to farm and ranch forever? And this question was really posed for all attendees to ask themselves anytime they're looking into a new management practice. But it's also something that I think is important to ask any landowner, even if, you know, it's a landlord or the landlord's kids or whoever it may be, just to get across to them that we do need to take care of the land and soil. Yes, so many of us are already doing great things and are amazing at doing that. But I think we need to continue to do that and stay on the forefront of always trying to do better. Like we kind of already are, but we can't uh, forget that either because it is so important to take care of our natural resources. Going to circle back just a little bit. So we made that point in the risk management section that labor and employees can be a risk that might need to be managed. And so we decided to dig deeper into that, into one of the calls. So the three biggest takeaways from this Rancher Mind call where we talked about retaining employees, finding interns, whatever it may be, were that you need to grow with your employees. Culture matters and set boundaries. So to ensure, and to ensure you are hitting the mark in these areas, you can do a few things. When we're talking about growing with your employees, evaluate what opportunities you have or can create to encourage growth and learning for your employees. Maybe that's allowing them to sit in on another part of your operation and like maybe the book work. Maybe that's paying for AI school or other industry learning opportunities, whatever it may be. Ask them, you know, what skills they have, where do they want to be, what do they want to improve, and try and grow with them. Now, culture. Ask yourself how you show up to work and how others show up to work. Every person that interacts on your operation contributes to the culture, and it's important you know what that is and if you want to improve it. And setting boundaries. So set those boundaries with your employees or any other family members who work on the operation to create healthy relationships. Maybe that means not talking about business at Christmas or Thanksgiving, or maybe that means just taking a break, allowing for vacations if you can. Um, and I know some people say, you know, you don't need those boundaries, but I think everyone needs boundaries to some degree. And you and your family and your culture have to determine what those healthy boundaries and breaks are so that everyone can continue to show up and contribute to the culture of the operation like you want them to. Now, this really is just the surface of the conversations and topics that occur during Rancher Mind events between experts and cattle producers. I just find it so refreshing and encouraging to see cattlemen and women who come together on a regular basis to learn how they can build profitable operations and improve the beef industry as a whole. So if being... <clears throat> so if being a part of these conversations is something you're interested in... I would encourage you to message me on my website so that you can join us for the next Reenter Mind um, without buying into the full subscription right away. Normally, you would have to buy into the subscription, but for the month of August, where we are going to be talking about how to create alternative revenue streams and sources for your operation, if you go on my website or social media and you message me DEAL, D-E-A-L, then you can join us in August without buying into the entire year. And I just want to reiterate that Yes, these are monthly calls where producers get to ask experts. They're not listening to slides. It's truly pure conversation, and it is a wide variety of topics, but this is truly an opportunity like no other in the beef industry because members pick the topics. I find the experts, and you just get to show up and have the conversations. It's not a big time commitment. It's a lot of fun. We learn together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we've really just created a small community of cattle producers, whether they are stalkers, cow-calf guys and gals, 
seed stock operators, people with very diverse operations, first generation, fifth generation. Um, if you're in your 20s, if you're in your 60s, it is a really fun group of people who are just there to learn and support one another. So remember, if you want in and the ability to try out August without buying into the full subscription right away, you go ahead and message me deal, D-E-A-L, and we will get you signed up and a part of this community. Happy ranching. Have a great day, folks.